Morning guys, John here, T4 family. Uh, this episode, I'm back in the T4. Um, T5 builds on hold at the moment. Uh, in about four or five days, we're heading off to France for our summer holiday. And there's a few jobs that I need to do uh, in our T4 before we go. Uh, one of the things that we have a problem with in this van, um, it's a fantastic in terms of its off-grid capabilities. Uh, we've got solar on the roof, we've got a 12 volt fridge in the van so we can keep everything cool. Um, but one thing we're never quite sure about is exactly how depleted our batteries are. Uh, we do have uh, one of these um, voltmeters, so turn that one on and I can turn this one on and it says at the moment 14.2 volts. Um, what that's telling me is the batteries are probably full and um, at 14.2 volts, the solar is probably trying to charge the battery. But apart from that, I don't know whether or not that battery is 100% charged. Uh, one problem that we do have when we are going away is when you are relying on a, a voltmeter alone to measure how full your battery is, it's not a linear curve. It, it doesn't step down um, gradually. Uh, what we try and do is we're trying to uh, run the battery down uh, to 12.0 volts, and that's the lowest we'll let it go, because that's about a 50% discharge on an AGM battery, uh, which is what we have installed here. Um, the thing is, you don't know how long it's gonna take to get down to 12.0. You know that at 12.0, it's empty, um, so all weekend you're you're trying to manage that level as it goes down. So what we have been wanting to do for a while and what we managed to pick up this week was um, we've got a, a battery monitor from uh, this one's from Renergy. Uh, the idea of a battery monitor is that uh, you put this in the uh, the negative line of the battery. So you connect this up to the negative terminal of your leisure battery. Everything else um, goes into uh, this, the battery monitor shunt. Uh, and what this monitor will do is it will count the amount of energy going in and out of the battery. So instead of relying just on the voltage of the battery, you know exactly how much energy has been removed from the battery while you're using it, but also how much is being put back in when you're charging. So that could be charging using your solar system, could be charging using your um, split charge if you're driving uh, or it could be um, from your mains charger when you're on hookup. So the idea is by keeping tally of all the energy out, all the energy in, that will give you a, a state of charge. Um, state of charge is measured as a percentage. Uh, so what this will end up doing is it will give you a display which will show you a lot like a fuel gauge on, on your vehicle, exactly how full your battery is. So this is what we're gonna to fit today. Uh, we're gonna to have a look, see what's included. I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed and then I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, before we get started, let's have a look, see what comes in the box. So um, this is the Renergy battery monitor. This video is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money. So um, that allows me to be completely honest with it. Um, I'm expecting it to be good. The reviews are really good. Um, I'm hoping for a straightforward install. Um, let's open the box, see what we got. Okay, so straight off, we've got a set of um, Renergy instructions, um, all English instructions there. I did read through this briefly. Um, very straightforward, it tells me exactly how I need to install this. It'll support us. Um, tag there. Inside the main box, you can see we have the, the main monitor units. Uh, this is where it's going to display uh, the state of charge of the battery. Uh, I believe it also shows you the current battery voltage and also the amount of current being used. Uh, we have on the right hand side, we have, this is the shunt. This is the um, the brains of the operation. Uh, the idea is uh, B minus that gets um, connected up to the negative terminal of your battery. Everything else, all of your loads get connected to the um, P minus. And the idea is uh, it measures um, the, the current as it's, um, 
I think more precisely, it measures a voltage drop across here and then works out the current based on that. But um, for all intents, this is the bit that is um, facilitating the measurement of the current. So the idea is the shunt measures um, the current, um, well, the unit measures the current drop through the shunt. Um, it can then calculate when the battery's full, when the battery's empty, uh, any point in between. And then the idea is that the battery monitor will then show that as a percentage. Uh, couple of other things we've got in here we have got um, got a, a positive cable there um, the shunt does require a, a feed to the positive terminal of the battery so that will connect up to this little green connector we've also got the data cable so the data cable is a six meter um, cable so you've got quite a lot of distance you don't have to have this monitor right next to your battery um, we're probably not going to need as much as that i don't know exactly where i'm going to put the battery monitor yet because we are going to have to cut a hole for it um, we'll see as we go but um pre-made shield cable connectors both ends one connects into the shunt and the other connects into the back of the battery monitor uh, the only other thing in here, uh, you have got screws provided. Um, that's really helpful because I've seen other battery monitors on the market which don't come with the screws, but also don't come with the um, brackets. You see this Perspex like plastic bracket that's um, holding the shunt there. It's got three holes um, so that you can mount that onto um, something in the van. I don't know what yet, probably a cabinet. Um, use the screws to hold it in place. So that's everything that's in the box. Um, not a huge amount in there. It should be a fairly straightforward install. Um, let's see how we get on. Okay, we're going handheld for this next bit because um, it's very, very tight down in our battery compartment. So I've had to, uh, to put the bed open because um, that's the only way that I can get access to in here. Uh, having a quick look in our battery compartment as we currently have it. So uh, I'll just give you a quick guided tour. Um, down in the corner, solar MPPT controller. We have got our 240 hookup uh, consumer unit here. Uh, next to that, we've got the switch, which runs around to the mains battery charger, which is on the other side. Uh, we've got a nice big uh, Victron uh, 100 amp hour uh, AGM battery in here at the moment that is connected to on this side we have got the fuse distribution block uh, you'll see there's a, a fuse missing at the top there um, this was connected to our um, VSR or voltage sensing relay which we had to remove because that was causing problems uh, with the um, battery getting damaged so I'm going to be swapping that out for a uh, a traditional split charge relay at some point uh, that's the other end of the, the cable uh, this the other end of this cable it goes up to the vehicle battery so what we need to do is on this negative terminal just down here um, we need to take all of those off and they need to be connected to the P minus of the the shunt on the the energy battery monitor. So um, looking at that, it, it looks like it's going to be the same size um, cables. I think these are M10. So I'm going to take this terminal off. Check that that's an M10 bolt. If it is, that means that we can connect. I think there's one, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, should be able to put all four of those cables onto the P negative of the shunt and then uh, we'll put a short cable back from the shunt back onto the negative terminal of the battery. Uh, the only other thing we will then need to do is connect up the, um, the positive. So we need to find something that's fused down here. Um, I don't know if you can see down here there it's a fuse um, 12 volt down there so we can hook off of that um, that needs to go back to the shunt and then I think what we'll do is we'll mount the shunt next to um, the uh, the main fuse um, 
distribution block. So if we put it here, we can run all of these cables back up to here and then the short cable back down to the negative of the battery. Should be fairly straightforward. Famous last words, no doubt. Um, let's go. Okay, as expected, um, we are straight into a problem. So these are the connectors that currently connect to the uh, battery. Now these, um, I don't know if you can make them out, but on, on the bottom of them, I don't think it's going to focus. Basically, these connectors are, um, well, this one's SC10-8. What that means is that that's a 10 millimeter square cable coming in and it's an M8 um nut um washer on the end now the problem that we've got is the renergy uses m10 bolts um so 10 millimeters across the bolt section so what i'm gonna have to do um i'm gonna have to hope that i have got some uh m10 um cable lugs um i'm gonna have to take this cable lug off recrimp it with a larger one um i'm gonna need one for this is the return for all of the loads and then i've got another one down here which is for the charger the mains charger now it looks like the connection for the diesel heat has already got an m10 if you just check that yeah that's gonna fit that'll be fine so i need to find two cable lugs um it looks like they're both 10 yeah they're both um 10 millimeter cables and then um, i need 10 millimeter um nuts on the end so i'm gonna go dive into the t5 build because uh, we've got some cable lugs um for the t5 build i'm gonna have to rob some parts um come back and get these wires crimped back up Okay, guys, quick update. Um, managed to find some 1610 um, cable lugs at the local hardware store. So let that be a lesson. Um, if you're in a bind and you can't wait for Amazon, check out your local hardware store. Sometimes they have what you need. So you managed to get some um, cable lugs, made up a, a short uh, cable this will go from the shunt back to the battery we do have another issue though let me just take you in here so the problem we've got now is that this wire which comes off of the battery charger is going to be but if i if i cut this off and put a, a 10 mil lug on it it's going to be too short to come up to where i've mounted the shunt um that's not ideal um i've also got to connect up um where is it there's a uh, there's a large um, battery there, that's the one that goes to the ground, so the vehicle ground, and then we've got the um, feed coming back from the rest of the, um, the electrical bits in the van. So what I'm going to do, this is not ideal, but it is the situation that I'm in, is um, from, from our previous build, we had one of these left over this is like a single a single stud so what i'm hoping i can do is that these two wires um are going to be long enough so i can mount the stud there then i'll run a short cable from this stud back up to the uh the load minus on the uh, shunt and then I'll have the B minus from the shunt back to the battery um, as I said not ideal you don't really want to add more connections if you can help it but this is the only solution that I've got right now so um, the other issue I've got is this battery I thought oh we'll just pull the battery out that won't be a problem this battery is so heavy um, it's so ridiculously heavy I can't 
physically lift it out of this tight space. So the, having to work around the battery as well, not ideal, um, but it is what it is. So let's continue and hopefully um, we'll be able to get there in the end. Right, um, it turns out the only place where all the wires are gonna meet together um, onto that terminal post was over here. So that terminal post, well attached to the cabinet there. All of the wires come together. So we've got the um, three wires, one from the charger, one which is the earth bond to the chassis, and then the one that returns back from all the other electrics. And then I have got this 16 millimeter um, return cable. This is gonna go onto the P minus on the shunt. Um, then we've got the, uh, well, we've got another wire that will come back to the negative point on the battery. So onto the home stretch, as far as wiring in is concerned, uh, all I've got to do is get that shunt mounted, um, get these cables uh, attached to it, and then we can start wiring in uh, the control module. Okay, we're all wired up. So back in here, uh, we now have the shunt in place. All of the wires, uh, the negative wires are going to this um, this battery post here. That goes back to the P minus on the shunt. And then the B minus works its way back down to the battery. Um, we've also wired in the, um, the 12 volt. That's going up to a fused circuit there. And then this is the control lead. So I've just plugged the um, control panel in just to, to test it. And as you can see, yeah, 100%. Um, I've confirmed this on our solar charger. Our battery is 100%. Um, you can see the screen flashing there. That's because uh, at the moment we are still getting a little bit of a charge from the solar. It's not sunny outside, but it is daylight. So you can see there there is um, three watts coming into the battery. If I go over to the fridge and uh, just kick the fridge on, So what this is going to do is it's going to start drawing some power off the battery and there now we see there is a 2.3 uh, uh well it's it's very varying but um the uh there's now a draw on the battery so the screen stopped flashing and we can see yep yeah, it's starting to come down so the battery is now showing us that um, 99 amp hours remaining because it's a it's 100 so as soon as it starts drawing away it's going to start counting down still at 100 percent capacity at the moment um so from what i believe uh this figure here is um something to do with how long your battery is going to last if you continue to to pull that uh we've also got we can see 13.1 volts um it's pulling about three and a half uh, yeah three and a half amps at the moment uh which is 47 uh watts so that's that's pretty much it i mean like when you um when you've got this unit um you can now mount it up somewhere i'm gonna go find somewhere where i can mount it um and now we will be able to keep an eye on the the health of our battery bank so that's the Renergy battery monitor if you've got any questions pop them in the comments um if this the video has been helpful be sure to give it a like and uh if you want to be notified of when we post our next video uh, make sure that you're subscribing and you've hit the notification bell so thank you very much